Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop. Today I want to talk about beads. I want to talk about when to use them, why to use them, and how to create them. And if you're not using them in your work, maybe this will inspire you to give it a try. When I talk about adding beads to your projects, I'm not talking about your typical spindle work or ball balusters, although those are valid areas for beads, but I'm talking about other types of projects such as bowls, platters, hollow forms, boxes, uh, and, and maybe ornaments. I know there's a lot of turners that say, hey, I, I turn, do 98% of my turning with a, with a bowl gouge. Well, I, I'm not one of those guys because I don't turn just bowls. I don't turn just hollow forms. I turn a wide variety. So uh, if you're one of these guys, you know, this might be of interest to, uh, to you to branch out and try something a little bit, uh, a little bit different. There's lots of different tools I use for uh, doing uh, doing beading, and I'll just glance at, uh, briefly introduce you to them now, and then we'll uh, we'll show you in detail how we're going to use them. Uh, first, the most obvious is is a three eighths inch uh, spindle gouge, a shallow fluted gouge. Uh, when I want a little finer detail uh, to go a little bit deeper, I use a an actual uh, detail gouge, which is a very very shallow flute. It's got a little more steel. Uh, and, a, and a more uh, more point uh, pointier uh, uh, tool, and this is a three eighths. And then I've got a, a smaller version of that, the quarter inch, for doing it on very very small uh, projects. Uh, in addition, a real common tool I use is the uh, uh, point point tool uh, with three points. Uh, I did a video on making and using this. If you haven't seen it, you can <laughs> click on the button. The button here to uh, to see that. But this is very handy for turning small small beads and making bead grooves. Uh, for face plate work or perpendicular work of, of a little larger nature, some I tend to move up to a uh, pyramid or pyramid a, a spear uh, scraper, uh, and it's used for many of the same purposes I use this, but typically for uh, larger work. And then I want to show you uh, two uh, specialty tools which are two old Harbor Freight uh, spindle gouges that they did a terrible job of heat treatment, didn't hold an edge very well, uh, and I ground them for special purpose uh, 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 beading, beading tools. And I'll, I'll give you a close-up of, of the profile here. I think to get started, uh, it might be wise to talk about the three different kind of beads there are. There's a faux bead, or false bead, uh, there's a standing bead, and then there's an inset bead. And I'm going to uh, walk you through turning those and give you some examples. So let's first talk about a faux bead. And a faux bead basically is a false bead, and it's made by just a couple of grooves. And your eye will tend to make you think that that's a bead in many instances, and that works very well on uh, boxes. Sometimes it works well on the bottom of a bowl, uh, and it can work uh, well on a simple... A simple bowl on on the uh, uh, on the side. You can also make multiple ones, as shown in in uh, this picture, where you've got a number of different uh, beads. So that's that's a faux bead. The next bead I want to show you is an inset bead. Inset bead is one we typically think of as as a regular uh, regular bead. Uh, actually. Let me just show you how to how to turn the thing. First thing we're going to do is we're going to mark the bead. And then we're going to lay this over. And we're just going to come over, carve in, lay it over on the top, bring the point in. And there we have a bead. You can see they look very similar. Uh, this could be touched up with sandpaper, but basically this this bead is in line with the with the uh, surface of the wood. Uh, so that's your your standard uh, inset bead. And this bead works in many instances the same same as the uh, faux bead. You'd use it in, in many instances in the in the same place. You could use it on a bottom of a bowl, side of a rim. Uh, the other, the third type of, of bead is what I would call a standing bead, and that's where the bead is actually proud of the surface. So in this case, uh, we can see that surface is brought down on both sides 
uh, of the bead. Uh, the beads are very, very pronounced. Um, and you'll see that on a number of number of projects. So typically how you'll do that is you would mark the bead. And then you're going to come in with a, a spindle gouge or a detail gouge and you're going to bring the surface of the wood to the base of the bead. And you're going to do that on both sides. Okay. Take that back just a little bit. And in some instances, you do this with, a, with the help of a scraper to get in, clean up some of that detail on that surface where you can get in right there into the corner of the bead. And then to finally clean up the bead, you're going to do it a more traditional way. You're going to lay your gouge on top and just roll it over to just round it off. And then you've got a traditional round bead, but it stands, pr stands proud of the surface. And you could do one or many just like you could do one or many here or one or many, many here. Another beading technique I wanted to show you uh, in a tool that I didn't talk about earlier when I talked about tools is turning a little fine beads uh, using a hand thread, a male hand thread chaser such as this uh, 10 TPI. Now I'm going to apply it on this bowl. I tend to use this sometimes on small boxes. You use it flat, it acts as kind of a negative rake scraper, and you just apply it. And if the surface is not perfectly flat, you may need to move it around just slightly. And then depending on how hard you press, how deep, you may get more of a faux bead or you might begin to get a, a true bead. But this works well when you're having small beads in, in groupings. Now this, this technique is one I've seen where you turn a series of beads on a bowl uh, very quickly. And sometimes it's used on uh, very simple utility bowls uh, and the embellishment is used in lieu of uh, sanding. Uh, I'm not... I'm not uh, too terribly skilled at it, but I just wanted to uh, show you the basic technique. You're generally going to go from the bottom of the bowl to the top, and we're just going to see how it works. Sometimes it gives some tear out because you are sometimes uh, uh, cutting the wrong way on a bead. So let's let me show you how that works. We engage the first bead. We roll up. In, drop the handle, come up over the bead carefully, bring it around, put the tip in, drop the handle, come back over the bead, lift the handle, bring it around. And this comes with speed, but it also comes with the uniformity of, of the size of the bead or controlling the bead, the, the size you want, in this case some, from smaller to larger, and getting clean cuts with a minimum of, of tear out. It would be worth mentioning on uh, sanding technique, uh, I fold over the sandpaper uh, to get a crisp edge and then sometimes I, I stick it in a groove and just spin it from one side to another. Frequently, I'll put a bead on the top rim of a bowl. Uh, one thing I'd want to mention is once I reduce the rim to the size I want, I don't necessarily uh, return the entire bowl before I finish the rim because I want as much mass down here as possible while I'm working, giving special uh, rim treatment. Uh, and while I'm doing this, there's a couple of techniques I want to show you. Typically, on the rim of a bowl, I will tend to mark that that bead with a with a scraper like this before I'll come in there with a spindle gouge and refine it. But 
uh, I guess what I want to do right now is show you one of those beading tools that I made from an old Harbor Freight spindle gouge. And we're going to look at the uh, three quarter, or rather the quarter inch. If y'all can see that, that profile. There we go. And what I'm going to do is just hold this tool flat, give myself a little room here, cut on center, and with the flat of the flute straight down, perpendicular, and with this particular uh, angle, it's, it's a very steep angle, I couldn't tell you exactly how much, it doesn't really make a lot of difference, but because it acts kind of as a negative rake, uh, you can hold this flat and it'll cut it just fine. So let's just give that a try. I'll just show, I'll just show you how this works. So we're going to embed those two fangs, so to speak. And then we're just going to slide and lift up and then rotate this backwards and forwards. Quitting before we get too much scrape, scraping at the very bottom of, of that. And that gives us a pretty nice uh, bead depending on, on the wood. Now then I'll come in here and eliminate this, this part with, with a bowl gouge. And before I finish that, what I tend to like on this particular shape is I like to have this bead somewhat uh, as a standing bead, so I'll come in with this, maintain bevel support, and then slice into the wood, and bring it up to the base of that bead. Maybe with a slight curve, slight very gentle curve, And then that gives me a nice blend of, of surfaces and it tends to give a very, a very clear, crisp mark here which, which tends to uh, define this a little bit, little bit better. So we've sanded the bottom and now we're going to come in and add some decorative uh, uh, beads. First thing we're going to do is kind of mark the, uh, where the bead's going to go. Turn the bead up just a little bit. And we mark the one side of the bead, then come in from the other side and, and mark it. Now we're going to come in and we're going to actually round over that bead a little bit. Just lay it on its, on its back, lay it uh, supporting the bevel. And lift it up. And then coming in from the uh, left hand side of the bead, we're going to uh, bring the Cut it into the base of the bead, so we'll get some nice, nice definition on the right hand side. Rounding it over, and come in from the right hand side and ease that cut again to the base of the bead, so we'll have some nice uh, definition there. I like this uh, this point tool a lot for doing small beads. It, it does a number of things. I think it, it I indicated earlier. Uh, I've got a video link here that'll that'll take you to a, a video on on the point tool but I want to show you how to make slight beads with it you'll notice I put my finger on the top I'm going to come in almost flat of course because it's sloped down it's uh, it's a scraper we're just going to go ahead and mark that bead now we're going to come back to this one we just drop the handle rotate the handle Forward where the bead is and come across the top. Same thing on the other side. Come in, drop the handle, rotate it toward the bead and, and just bring it across the top. And that makes a very nice uh, uh, bead, especially in, in end grain as you typically do for a box. Now you can do the same thing on the side. And little beads on a box, uh, let's assume, let me give you a little better view of that. 
let's say that's the seam between the box. A little bead can do a couple of things. It can disguise that join. Drop it. Roll it over. Same thing on the other side. Drop the handle, lean in toward the bead, and just come across the top. And it can help dis disguise that, uh, that, that joint. Standing beads are frequently used on a box. Let's look at an example here. I think we'll... Typically, you sneak up on that uh, on that inside. Which on end grain can give you just a really smooth surface. And that might be a, a feature on, a, on, on the end of a box. Here's an example of a standing bead on a on an ornament uh, bell. Just a nice little decorative feature. Generally, when I do a uh, doing this on a bowl, uh, rather than use the uh, quarter-inch pyramid tool, I like to use a spear point uh, scraper and pick up speed just a little bit, closer to a thousand. And let's just put a little mark here. Let's put a little mark here. Let's put a little mark here. And of course, you could put put beads or whatever. And Always again separate it with some type of visual, either a V-groove, a burn mark, uh, exotic, uh, or, or a little bead. And here's how a bead can accentuate the distortion in a uh, once turned bowl that, uh, that is warped. Here's how a series of uh, V-grooves or faux beads can, can accentuate the, uh, or embellish the side of a bowl. Here you can see how that very crisp uh, detail on the edge of that bead uh, sharpens the focus and we can compare that to others where, where it's not as sharp. This is a beautiful uh, piece of wood, this black limba, but the bead is just sort of, uh, just doesn't have that crisp detail at the base uh, and it, it was sa sanded round so it just doesn't look quite as nice. Now let's, let's contrast that with one of Bradford Pear over here where the bead is just is just much much crisper in detail with a, it, it gives it a little more of a shadow line a bead can add functionality such as this bead near the rim uh, down from the rim a couple of a couple of inches which provides uh, finger support when you're holding the the platter which makes it easier to hold it allows your finger to rest rest on it just giving it a better grip. Here's another example of a functional bead on a chalice that makes it easier to to hold. You'll find these are quite common on on chalices if you look at if you look at a number of pictures. I'm no beading guru and I'm certainly not a design uh, design expert. Much of what I, I learned I got out of Richard Raffin's book The Art of uh, uh, Turn Bowls. Uh, I would suggest, uh, or I hope this has inspired you to try to add some beads if you don't, uh, if you haven't been putting them on some of your uh, bowls and and hollow forms and, and and such. But like any technique, you need to practice it. So practice on scraps of wood. Take you uh, one of your bowl blanks and just just practice. Put some beads on it. Take them away. Put some more beads on. It, take them away because that's the only way you're going to get comfortable with it and adding it to to one of your your projects. As always, I welcome your comments. If you've got any questions, I'll try to answer those as well. Safe turning, friends.